your body after accumulating a certain amount of fatigue will need to back off. And if you think you can train ultra hard for the same muscles twice a day, every day, you are welcome to try it. In medical supervised context, you won't last. Can you say more about the neural part of this? I find this to be a very interesting piece. And out of all the pieces you've described, I, I know the least about that component. One of the big um, misconceptions is that there's muscular fatigue, connective tissue, systemic fatigue, blood vessels and everything still have to, heart has to pump. But then people just say, oh, and then the cent central nervous system. Well, the peripheral nervous system is a thing too. And it also takes substantial amount of fatigue. You could imagine it as like a transatlantic cable. And like you throw enough current through a cable and the fish nibble at the cable enough, you need to start replacing the cable. Mm. Now, if you're really, really using the crap out of that cable, yeah, it's going to like un undergo some not so great things. And then closer to neuron to neuron junctions or the neuromuscular junction between the neuron and the muscle itself, you have vesicles of neurotransmitter. You pump enough of those in, you get the cool stuff of communication. You can run low on neurotransmitter and then like the electrical signal arrives and the neurotransmitter is like, sorry, not <laughs> enough of us to do anything. And so you experience profound weakness, which is expressed as, uh, or fatigue expressed as weakness. And you need time to reconstruct a lot of those neurotransmitters, place them into vesicles, have those vesicles translocate to the synaptic cleft, and then like sit there and get ready. And that is a process that typically happens rapidly, but if you really exhaust it, it can happen over some time. If you clear enough of that neurotransmitter, you don't feel the same the next day. You feel different. And it takes a day or two to get back up to those levels. The similar types of mechanisms are at work when you are going to very close to true failure on, let's say, a squat or a leg press. I mean, you're cooking your muscles, but every single capacity of the nervous system to say push, push, push is at maximum. If you have really, really hard workouts, it just might take several days for you to be able to have a really, really hard workout again for that same muscle group. Luckily, because a lot of this is peripheral nervous system based and local musculature based, if you train the living crap out of your chest one day and your triceps, you can train back and biceps, which have nothing much to do with those movements pretty robustly the next day. Much of the fatigue is local. It's not all local. And when your body can tell through a variety of mechanisms that like, you know, pretty messed up here, it's going to pull back on how hard you can do anything. And some of those neural structures might even be operating at full bore, but they're just degraded enough to where full capacity isn't full capacity anymore. That's kind of how it works. And, and you have to understand that when you're entering the gym, if you're training properly, you are asking a lot of your physiology. You are pushing it to its limits. If you're not, you're not using your time best and you're not getting the best outcomes.